President of the African Development Bank, AFDB, Akinwumi Adeshina, is a recipient of various awards, such as the World Food Prize in 2017, African of the Year by Forbes Africa twice in 2014 and 2019, respectively, the African Person of the Year by the Africa Leadership Magazine, and many more. It has also been reported that under his leadership, the African Development Bank has helped in accelerating the development of the continent. However, in light of the ongoing investigative probe of the president, his tenor risk termination, should this be allowed to stand? Joining us for a conversation on the development at the bank is Frank Weke, the former Director General of Nigeria Economic Summit Group. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Let's start this conversation with um, a look at the agreement by the bank to continue a review of the committee's report already uh, concluded. What's the latest on it? It's almost two months now. <laughs> well, well um, first of all, I mean, I don't hold grief for the African Development Bank, um, but as, um, as a Nigerian citizen, and as someone who is very much interested in um, uh, public policy, uh, development planning, and of course the, uh, the welfare, the well-being of not just Nigeria, but of course the, the African continent, the black race, uh, wherever they may be all over the world, one is, um, uh, one is interested in such uh, matters. Of course, and all the information I have is just uh, the same set of information you may have picked up from the media, uh, social and traditional media, and of course, um, we recall that um, after the uh, so-called um, investigation by the uh, bank's ethics committee under the rules and the guidelines established by the bank, um, certain shareholders, um, America in particular, um, expressed uh, strong reservations there still. And quite unfortunately, in my own estimation, purely my own judgment, um, the, the board of governors I hear uh, buckled and um, then allowed uh, what they call an external review by an independent uh, party. Um, right. It's, um, I, I think, honestly, um, maybe it's a way forward. Maybe it's some uh, deliberate effort to uh, manage the uh, image of the bank. But right. is it appropriate for individual shareholders to uh, seek um, intervention from external parties in ways that had not yet been, uh, sorry, that were not uh, uh, um, uh, captured in the existing uh, guidelines for the management of the bank, especially the ethics committee. I think it is, um, I think it is illegal. I think it is, it is something that should be condemned by all uh, men and women of goodwill all over the world. All right, let's talk about his work then, because I mean, at the end of the day, your work should be able to speak for you. The most recent affirmation is by the global rating agency, S&P. It notes very strong financial risk profile and capital adequacy among other positive assessment. What are the implications for the African Development Bank with this sort of rating? You know, it's not just S&P, Moody's, okay? And of course, Fitch rating agencies. These are, these are the world's most influential rating agencies. And for them to have uh, awarded the African Development Bank under President Adishina triple A ratings in five years in a row, says so much for the man's managerial capacity, says so much for his patriotism, says so much for his dedication, uh, uh, his dedication to his work, his commitment to his work, and his commitment to the development of Africa. Of course, you know what his ratings means. It just shows clearly that the, 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 the bank has an excellent capacity to meet its financial obligations in any given year. And, you know, these are the most influential global, uh, sorry, uh, rating agencies in the world. And for them to offer these ratings five years in a row says a lot about, his, um, about the leadership of uh, Dr. Akin Adishina as president of uh, the African Development Bank. When, when he came on board, he, he came up with this High Five initiative. Uh, we'll talk about one area. We'll talk about others as much as time will let us. In the area of industrialized Africa, for instance, we know that the bank facilitated the construction of the Nairobi Addis Ababa corridor, which took about $670 million financing and has enhanced the potential for trade and job growth in Ethiopia and Kenya. Would cost implications not be too enormous for the bank if it must maintain the execution of these manner of projects across the continent? Um, so I, I believe you're referring to the uh, so-called uh, Nairobi um, Addis Ababa uh, oh. corridor. 
I mean, this is an extremely important project, okay? Extremely important project. It's been in the works, see, as far back as the early 70s, say from about 1974, that was when this project was first uh, conceptualized. And then for it to come to fruition under President Additional says, again, so much for his commitment to the development of Africa, says so much for his uh, vision for Africa. And um, if I am uh, not mistaken, that corridor um, has a length of about, it's almost a thousand kilometers or just a little below 900 kilometers thereabouts. And then, um, you know, uh, the, the amount of money committed, uh, the $670 million that you referenced, that was, that was 64% of the total cost of constructing that road. And this was done under President Ake uh, additional. And then you ask yourself, what has happened? You know, it's not just enough to call the figures, but it is important to understand the impact that these interventions have had in different parts of Africa. And so if you look at the specific case of the Nairobi Addis Ababa corridor that you just referenced, since that time, right, trade between uh, Ethiopia and, the Ke and Kenya alone has uh, grown from about $35 million prior to about $175 million, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken. All right, since then, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the transportation to and fro these, uh, uh, the two borders have eased considerably. And so before this was done, it could take up to two to three weeks sometimes just trucking uh, goods uh, from one uh, country to the other. But since this was done, it has taken less than a week. It, also, it has also meant that transporters will charge lower fares. It also meant that uh, higher tonnages will be, uh, will be, uh, will be trucked to, uh, you know, trucked between uh, both countries. Now look at it in terms of the number of, I mean, the employment that we generated, the, 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 uh, the, the, the fact that, um, uh, 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 what you call it, produce and other things, uh, materials needed to fire, uh, you know, to power factories, you know, can be transported much more easily. So the impact is huge. And then look at it again in terms of what you to do to say the quantity of manufactured goods that will move from, say, Africa into the global uh, uh, trade, uh, so, you know, uh, supply chain, or from Ethiopia into the global supply chain. Then look at it in the context of the uh, percentage of African trade you know, what percentage that African trade contributes to, uh, to, uh, to global trade, then you then understand the importance, the value that investments in this critical infrastructure are bringing to the continent. So it is a big deal. And as an African, I'm extremely proud of what is done. And of course, there are several other examples um, across other sectors that hopefully maybe if time permits, maybe in the course of our conversation, we could yes, touch on some There's, there's some really a lot of talk about the impact the AFDB has had on the lives of Africans under his leadership. What are the prospects for African countries if he has the opportunity to lead for another five years? Listen, if you have, first of all, let's even see what has happened in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the five years since, uh, since he was elected president, right? Okay, because for an institution like that, it's extremely important that that vision is also his vision. I mean, the, um, his so-called uh, high fives, you know, uh, integrate Africa, uh, light and uh, power Africa, uh, feed Africa, industrialize Africa, and then of course, improve yeah, the quality improve of lives of Africans. Life, yeah. This was the five key uh, agenda items that he identified. So what has happened since then? I tell you what has happened, right? From the records, okay? From the records, it shows that about 18 million Africans have uh, had improved access to electricity because of his um, Light of Africa initiative. Yeah, what has happened is that about 141 million Africans have had improved access to agricultural technology, and therefore this has led to improved food security for Africa. What has happened since his, under his tenure is that about 13 million Africans more, I mean, like 13 million Africans have had access to finance due to the facilitation of the bank for private sector investment. Another 101 million people have had access to better transport uh, through the Integrate Africa uh, Agenda item. And another 60 million have had improved access to water and sanitation under the improved quality of life of Africans. This is what has happened in the, in the, in the current five-year tenure, which comes to an end sometime in, um, uh, I think sometime in August or thereabout. So what we're looking at is an aggregate of uh, 300, about almost 350 million Africans that have been impacted due, I mean, uh, by the various uh, initiatives that uh, Akin Adeshino introduced when he became president of Africa. Now, what will then happen is, if by any stretch of imagination, he was to lose his re-election, God forbid, all of these things are going to go away. There will be no opportunity for him to consolidate on these things. On the other hand, right, on the other hand, if he were to be elected, you know, given a second term in August by God's grace, and some of us are praying because he is a worthy representative of the African continent. 
These are the kinds of brilliant minds. These are the kinds of courageous people. These are the kinds of visionaries that you need to really bring about the kind of transformation you need in Africa. Okay, so if he's elected, again, estimates show that another 105 million people are going to have even, you know, uh, improved access to electricity. Another 204 million are going to have improved uh, access to agriculture technology in order to really enhance Africa's food security. Another 23 million Africans would, you know, benefit from investor, uh, 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 investor private sector, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies because of the access to finance that they have. Another 252 million Africans will gain access to improved transport services under the Integrate Africa Initiative. And another 128 million Africans will benefit from improved water and sanitation. These are the kinds of things that we expect to see. And so if you aggregate all of these figures and impacts, one can expect reasonably, given uh, the evidence of what has happened in his first term, that perhaps by the end of his, uh, another five years, you might just have a situation where at least a billion, maybe 50% of Africa's population would have been touched in one way or the other in very profound ways by this visionary gentleman and the, uh, the, the, the very clear um, initiatives that he has uh, put in place. What, what would happen if, if well, I mean, what would happen if um, he is stopped from consolidating and all of these um, achievements? Because a, a time will not permit us to, you know, I mean, for you to enumerate a lot more, but what would happen if all of this, um, he still has his pulse in everything that's going on? If that is cut short, what would happen? What do you see happening? I, you know, maybe one is a bit sentimental. Maybe, you know, again, look at the situation in our country, look at the situation on the continent, most countries of the continent. I would consider it a great tragedy for the African continent if President Akin Adesino of the African Development Bank is not re-elected in August. It will be tragic. Because what it will mean, again, is that all of the benefits that I've enumerated, right, um, you can just, you can expect that they're going to fly out of a window, all right? Let's not forget, he's not the first African to occupy this position. But how many of his predecessors have had such transformative impact or have articulated agenda that have had such transformative impact on the continent as a whole, right? With every sense of modesty, I want to say that he's outstanding. He's one of the he's best in class for now. I hope that his uh, successor will, uh, will, out, will outdo him. That is really, you know, we're Africans. We like to look at it in terms of, you know, may your successors, may your children be better than you. So I hope that Akin additional successors will be, you know, far better than him after his tenure. But not before. Uh, I'm sorry. After his um, after his second tenure, but not before. And so I, I really pray, as I, I'm, I know many Africans of goodwill, and many lovers of Africa around the world are praying and working to ensure that he is reelected for a second term as president of the African Development Bank. Well, we're not going to stop it there. We're going to have you talk to us about what we should look forward to if he gets the opportunity of another five-year term. What should Africans look forward to? And with all that he has achieved, I mean, where would we be? You know, something that I, 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 thought, I thought I might point out is, listen, like one of the most remarkable things he's done in his five-year tenure is actually to improve the uh, bank's uh, capacity to, um, uh, to expand the, um, the capital base of the, of the bank. And so from a paltry uh, $93 billion uh, when he, um, when he uh, was elected as the uh, president of the bank about uh, four and a half years, about five years ago, he has uh, upped the game significantly, increasing that capital base to about $208 billion, an increase of about $115, uh, million, uh, $115 billion. It is unprecedented in the 56-year history of this bank. Not to literally triple the capacity of this bank to really carry on its development finance duties. Okay, what it will mean is that if he were, if you, if, if 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 for any reason, any stretch of imagination, he is not um, reelected. Okay, I can assure you that um, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same at all. And I say this because I've watched him. I mean. Um, um, I've watched him in, you know, and you, you just uh, touched briefly on his, uh, you, I mean, you know, you really touched on a brief profile of his, uh, of his uh, career path. And you see that he's been outstanding everywhere, whether as a scholar, right, whether as a professional, everywhere he's been, he's been outstanding. Of course, I remember, or we, we should all remember his performance as the Nigeria's Minister for Agriculture and the, um, 
the uh, agricultural transformation agenda, which he uh, which he initiated at the time, and which uh, even uh, successor governments have continued to work with. And so this is the same capacity and zest and courage that Aki Adesina has taken to the African Development Bank, and uh, for which reason we see the kind of brilliant results that we now have there. And so I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that another five years of Aki Adesina will leave Africa a transformed continent, will help to put Africa on the path of irreversible infrastructural development. It will put Africa on the path of irreversible economic development. It will put Africa on the path of irreversible human development. And so I'm really hopeful that Africans of goodwill, be it on the platform of the African Union, be it on the platform of uh, the uh, economic community of West African states, be it on the, economy, on the uh, platform of, um, of, um, of the uh, East African economic uh, uh, community, that all of these people will come together in the interest of the continent to support this candidate. And let me say this, let me say this, right? Let me say this, it's really important. And for Europe and America, those that claim to love Africa, those that are quick to offer aid to Africa, we have a visionary at the bank. We have a, someone of such keen intellect at the bank. Maybe you should consider keeping your aid from you because right. someone, Aki Adesina and his colleagues at the bank have demonstrated capacity to really fund Africa's development, well, to really we'll develop do. Africa through clear thinking, through right. committed implementation, right? Through accountability, they've demonstrated it. And so what we need at this time, if I was speaking on behalf of government, is their support when it is time to vote in August. It is their support that we require. You love Africa? Vote for this candidate who has demonstrated such profound capacity, who have really demonstrated uh, such uh, uh, um, uh, transformative ability at the bank. Mr. That is what you must do. I'm, I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us. But thank you very much for all the explanation you've given. And we share your optimism. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you so much. Great pleasure. All right. Well, we'll take our plots report now. And when we return, I'll be given my take. Just stay with us. The hearing commenced with the stepping down of the chairman of the committee, Honorable Olubumi Tunji Ojo, who had earlier been accused by the chairman of the NDDC, Professor Kema Brady Pondey, of being an active player in the activities of the commission. In line with my belief that people deserve to be heard and to be heard fairly. Having said this, I wish to clearly appeal to my colleagues, though you passed a vote of confidence on me, the leadership passed a vote of confidence on my personality as the chairman of this committee. For the sake for Nigerians to know, I'm not on a mission of vengeance. I wish to humbly appeal to my colleagues to recuse me from presiding over this particular meeting. I hope this will give you, this will give all parties opportunity to present their facts. The acting chairman of the committee took over and assured those present that a hearing will be fair and just. We are here as brothers and sisters, and we are here to do justice to the issue we have at hand. This is an investigation panel. It's not a probe. Nobody's been probed here. There are issues that we needed you to come and throw light on. That's why we are here. So as the proceeding goes on, we we'll ensure that everybody is giving fair hearing, but we also have to moderate to ensure that at the end of today, we have a good proceeding. Committee members took time to tackle the team from the NDDC over discrepancies in the commission's accounts. I've produced your submission, sir, and I've also seen the letter written to you. So for us to be able to flow seamlessly, you know, so that everybody will be on the same page, I expect that you should lay your approved budget where you derive the strength to spend the money 
you are, you are telling us. From where are you going to spend this money you said here on oath that you are preparing to pay students who are on scholarship? Are you aware that every expenditure you make from 31st May till date are not are not suddenly the unexpected happened the chairman of the commission suddenly slumped much to the surprise of keen observers the hearing was thus forced to adjourn for 30 minutes <laughs> With the chairman of the NDDC successfully evacuated from the National Assembly complex and taken to hospital, the hearing continued. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. Dr. Kim Wumi Adeshina's first term ends on August 31st, 2020. My simple take is he should be re-elected. His record is an open book and he deserves a second term. It's not just my thinking though. This opinion enjoys a general consensus. Nigeria's president, Muhammad Buhari, has pledged to work with all African leaders and stakeholders of the bank to mobilize support for Adishina's re-election. He said the man has done well and one good term deserves another. The executive committee of the African Union, consisting of all 55 African countries, have also unanimously endorsed Dr. Adeshina. All 15 heads of state of the ECOWAS region holds the position that he remains the only candidate from the continent. His remarkable leadership at the bank was also not lost on the 14 former heads of state and government of Africa, and your guess is as good as mine. They say he should be allowed to continue the good work for the peoples of this world. I am convinced on this one, we will prevail. Many thanks as always for your kind attention. The program is live every weekday at 7 p.m. Do find time to join us. Have yourself a lovely evening.